So we got the very hype 255 spoilers. I'm getting chills just seeing the raw panels here, but without wasting any more time, let's get straight into the coverage. So in the last chapter, it ended off with Miguel saving Wee Wee in the nick of time from Sukuna. And this chapter starts by showing LaRue being there with Miguel. So for a quick oh! reminder, LaRue was one of the members of Ghetto's old group. Most of you might remember him since he had a very standing out appearance to put it simply, but after Ghetto died in Volume 0, that group was still together somewhat in Shibuya to retain Ghetto's body back from Kinjaku. Although, at the end of Shibuya, LaRue was later revealed to be in alliance with Yuki, so at some point in time, he unaligned himself with the curse users and went on to work under Yuki, probably because he knew that working with the sorcerers was the best chance for stopping Kinjaku. Moving on though, it's revealed he also retrieved Kusakabe using his curse technique. We'll understand how he exactly did that later in the chapter. Flashback to Yuta discussing with Miguel and LaRue. Miguel rejects Yuta's request to fight Sukuna, saying, why does he have to fight a monster who has the possibility to win against Gojo? So at some point during the one month time skip, Yuta went back back to Africa to try and recruit Miguel to their defeat Sukuna plan. He likely did this with the help of Wiwi's teleportation since we know that he can teleport country distances, teleporting from Japan to Malaysia once. But it further goes to show how much the crew prepared during the one month time skip. The plan we've been seeing right now has been super layered with backups and fail safes attached. So it's pretty impressive what they were able to come up with in just one month. But during the conversation between Yuta, LaRue, and Miguel, LaRue tries to convince Miguel, saying, I'm just asking you to help us deliver the final blow to Sukuna, who will be burnt out after fighting Gojo Satoru. Yuta and LaRue tries to convince Miguel by telling him that it's better to fight Sukuna rather than a giant cursed spirit, the Tengen merger, which could just stomp a whole country like Godzilla. But Miguel again declines their offer, saying, Why do you Japanese people think that cheerful black people will just survive anything? Miguel adds that Gojo should have came to him with his head down to request for help. Man, I actually can't wait for this chapter to get fully translated because Miguel's dialogues are pretty funny. Like, there's another flashback panel that occurs later in the chapter, and it just makes me wish Miguel was more prevalent in the story. LaRue and Miguel then had a private talk. Miguel says he did everything because he wanted to follow Ghetto. He also fulfilled his obligation of training Yuta since Gojo saved him, so he doesn't want to be involved with Japan anymore. Wow, so I think this is the first time we're hearing that Yuta was training under Miguel in Africa. To be honest, I wouldn't mind seeing an extra spinoff showing their entire trip in Africa. LaRue says, we fight with everything we have and tell Ghetto to take care in heaven. Miguel pauses for a moment, then says, first of all, he definitely went to hell. Yeah, Miguel is definitely rising in the likable characters tier. Miguel says he has a condition. He will fight Sukuna after Gojo and Yuta loses and when Sukuna can't use his domain anymore. He also wants LaRue to join him to fight Sukuna because it's better if he has more friends. Back to the present, Miguel and LaRue notices that Sukuna can't use his domain, his reverse curse technique has been weakened, and his heart hasn't been healed yet. So only hitting one black flash, it's not enough to fix those problems. From what we saw with Gojo, according it works the same for Sukuna, he would have to hit at least one more black flash to regain the output on his reverse curse technique. Going into the action, LaRue uses his curse technique to grab hold of Sukuna and slams him to a wall. We'll get back to the explanation of his curse technique later as Sukuna sends slashes towards them, but Miguel easily ducks, dodges, and even jumps in between them. Oh my god, he is moving like Neo from the Matrix. This is insane. I was not expecting Miguel to be this strong and powerful, but as to how he's doing this, well, first it goes over LaRue. So the narrator explains that LaRue's curse technique, Heart Catch, can grab the subject via an imaginary hand. The imaginary hand will restore itself even if it's destroyed, but one-tenth of the damage will be redirected back to LaRue. So he can basically unleash a projectile of his own hand, and it's pretty big. So that's how he was able to 
retrieve Kusakabe from a far distance. It sort of reminds me of Junichi's curse technique from the Zenin clan. And any damage that the hand receives, like let's say it runs hard into a wall, Laru would only feel one tenth of that damage since, you know, he's sort of connected with that projectile hand. Sukuna thinks Larue's curse technique is no fun, but Miguel's curse technique is highlighted. His curse technique is called Hakuna Lana. It helps his body to catch a rhythm to dodge curses and enhance his physical ability. Short flashback to Gojo explaining Miguel's curse technique to Yuta. Gojo says Miguel's curse technique brings out buffs and debuffs of himself and the opponent without using a domain expansion. Gojo adds that it's a pretty useful curse technique, but not really a scary one. So I guess that's how Miguel was able to eat up all the punches from Gojo. Assuming the translations are accurate, he could buff his physicals enough to the point where he can tank all those hits from Gojo without seriously getting damaged after. Even Gojo complimented how tough Miguel was. But of course, that's if you believe the movie was canon, which I'd say it is. And the whole thing of sensing the rhythm to dodge curses and attack, that's pretty crazy. Like he's literally doing that to dodge Sukuna's dismantles. It sort of reminds me of Maki's heightened heavenly restriction senses, though I don't know if it works to the exact same effect because he couldn't dodge any of Gojo's punches, but that could also be because Miguel's technique couldn't bypass Gojo's infinity barrier. Yeah, that could explain it. I guess we'll just have to wait and see more action sequences with Miguel and his curse technique to get a better examination. Gojo says Miguel's physical abilities are truly frightening. 99% of Jujutsu sorcerers are Japanese and they use cursed energy to strengthen themselves. Gojo further adds that Miguel, who has a rare skeletal structure, uh? becomes a threat compared to a Japanese sorcerer. So Miguel is basically the 1% of Jujutsu sorcerers that aren't Japanese. Not gonna lie, when I read this part, my eyebrows were raised like, yo, the way Gojo worded that was, I'll just say it was very careful, but it was also very obvious. And yeah, I mean, even Miguel caught on to it because he refused refutes Gojo's statement saying Gojo is labeling him as that because he's black and that's just discrimination. There exist black people who are non-athletic. Miguel continues saying I'm not special because I'm black. I'm a part of that 1% because I'm me. And Gojo says sorry. Miguel responds it's fine. Bruh. See this is why I now wish for more Miguel screen time. It's, it's crazy how one chapter can make you really like a character that that, I'll be honest, I didn't really care about before. Like when Miguel appeared in the last chapter saving Wee Wee, in my head I was like, are you for real Miguel? But after reading the spoilers and just reading his dialogues, I'm a fan. I'm all aboard the Miguel train. Back to the fight, Miguel grabs hold of Sukuna's arms and lands a heavy punch. Sukuna's back is hit with Chozo's supernova. So big bro Chozo's back and if he's back, then that means Yuji rejoins the fight as well. He directly lands on Sukuna and slams him to the ground. The narrator explains that to activate the world slash, Sukuna has to use the hand sign named Enmitten, which is also used for Malevolent Shrine, but since Sukuna was left with just one arm after Gojo's final hollow purple, he needed to use a binding vow to send the world slash on Gojo without having the hand sign. So it's nice that Gege finally gives us the confirmation on that. Most people already knew this was going to be the case, but after transforming into his OG form, Sukuna now has to use both hand sign Enmitten and the incantations to activate the world slash on top of that, Sukuna also needs to set the direction for the slash with his hands, and the reason why the narrator is bringing this up now is because suddenly, Sukuna's left arm gets sliced off as he was confronting Yuji. It was Maki who cut off Sukuna's arms, and she does it with a crazed smile on her face. So Maki is back. I don't think anyone expected her to be out for the remainder of the fight, and for those who don't know, it wasn't Shoko who healed Maki, but it was Maki who who healed herself. Shown in the Sakurajima colony that she has a passive healing capability with her heavenly restriction. Sukuna is surprised to see Maki back even after receiving the black flash from him. Yuji proceeds to engage in fighting while thinking that Sukuna can't complete his hand sign since he's left with only two right arms and he can't use reverse curse technique yet either. So they can win the fight now. But, and I swear it's always when they start feeling an ounce of victory, as 
As if to pour water on Yuji's hope, Sukuna instantly hits LaRue with a black flash. The narrator says, Gojo regained his reverse curse technique output with his second black flash. So, the king of curses now gained and yeah that's where the chapter ends and miyamura says we truly don't know if sukuna got his reverse curse technique back next chapter will clear that fact narrator just used gojo as an example here so wow what a chapter if sukuna truly does regain his reverse curse technique oh boy i think we're cooked because having his reverse curse technique back that could eventually lead to having his domain available again and at that point it would feel like fighting the sukuna that fought Gojo. This whole time, we've been fighting a nerfed Sukuna, so yeah, it's gonna be even more tough if Sukuna truly does regain his RCT, but honestly, I love this. I like how the tension of this fight feels very on edge, and it's like we're grasping for any bit of hope right now. I know a lot of people think it's getting repetitive, and I can definitely understand that since the outcome seems to be the same thing all the time, but for me personally, I've just been really enjoying the Shinjuku showdown. Down and I can't wait to see how Yuji, Maki, Chozo, and Miguel will respond to Sukuna hitting his second Black Flash. Definitely let me know your thoughts on the spoilers in the comment section down below. This was a chapter with a lot of discussing points, so I will make a review this week, or at least before the next spoilers come out. As yeah, with all that being said, thank you so much for watching my 255 spoiler coverage, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.